Too many times I see riders crossing the double yellow line when turning from a stop. Obviously, this is dangerous, so let's fix it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily make tight turns from a stop. Now let's hop into it. Today I'm out here in the parking lot and I have some cones set up representing left and right turns. You don't necessarily need cones for this exercise, but it definitely helps so that way you have some type of barrier. By having these cones set up, they'll represent hazards in real world situations and help keep you a little more accountable. But as I said, you don't absolutely need them. So I have the entrance set up at five feet wide and then your turning lane from here to here, I just use one parking spot, which is usually about nine feet. And this is a very simple exercise to set up. And notice that I set up these big cones on the ends here. And this is because the goal of right now isn't to be leaning, because if you're in a tight spot and you end up leaning, you end up hitting this cone. And in the real world, that could be a car or a wall or something. So we want to have complete control of our bike while we're turning. Of course, in some other situations, you'll be able to lean, but for now, we want to get comfortable not leaning. So let's go over some of the basics that we're going to be using while we're performing this exercise. The first thing that we're gonna be using is the friction zone. If you don't know what that is, it's that sweet spot in your clutch where it starts providing power to the rear wheel. And when you have power to the rear wheel, the bike's gonna to wanna to stay standing up. Now the friction zone leads us into the second thing that we're gonna be needing is throttle. When you're in the friction zone, you need to make sure you have enough throttle so that way your engine doesn't start to lug or stall. I like to keep my RPMs between 1900 and 2000 but the main goal is, is you listen with your ear and over time you'll know how much throttle you'll actually need. So we have the friction zone and the throttle. Now we're gonna introduce a little bit of rear brake. We're just gonna be lightly dragging it while we're turning. By lightly dragging the rear brake, you can do two things, control your speed and it will help the bike stand up more. And then lastly, head and eyes and handlebar turn. This is gonna be very important as well. So when you're coming through this lane to do your turn, you're gonna end up turning your head and eyes first because in the real world, we wanna make sure there's no obstacles in the way. And when you're turning your head and eyes, you gotta make it deliberate. And in return, your body will naturally start turning those handlebars. Let me go ahead, hop on the bike and walk you through it. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, obviously start the bike or we're not going anywhere. And then make sure you're in first gear. So it's always good habit to just tap your shifter even though you already know you're in first. And then we're gonna bring our right foot up and we're gonna cover this rear brake. You can just rest your foot on it. When you're done doing that, then you're gonna raise up your RPMs. And I do it by sound. And if I look down, I'm at about 1700 RPMs. Then you're gonna find your friction zone. Remember, it's that sweet spot right about there. See how the bike starts moving forward? And with that throttle being added, that's gonna give me more than enough power to keep on moving forward. So for the first time, we'll go to the left. We're simulating, we're sitting at a stoplight or something. So I'm first gear, covering that rear brake, RPMs up, smoothly enter into that friction zone, nothing sudden. Then we're moving forward, looking where we wanna go, turn the handlebars, and notice, zero lean. All right, now we'll do it to the right. We're gonna do all the same things that we did going to the left. So you make sure you're in first gear, cover that rear brake, get your throttle up. And right here, I'm about 1800 RPMs and I can hear it. Then find that friction zone. There it is. So now, smoothly start moving forward, entering into that friction zone. Make sure there's no hazards, turn your handlebars. Lightly dragging that rear brake. Now be a little dramatic with the rear brake and show you why you don't want to be stabbing at it. It disrupts the bike's balance. So come through here, look. See, I almost fell over. You have to do all this stuff smooth. The friction zone, your throttle. If you listen to my throttle, it didn't change. You gotta keep it steady. Just set it and forget it. I do wanna mention, once you cross this threshold of these cones, that's when you can start your turn. But if you end up leaning and you start your turn right there, chances are you're gonna end up hitting that cone. So that's why we wanna to try to keep the bike straight up and down. And if you notice my body position while I was making that turn, my body was straight up and down. I wasn't 
counterbalancing or anything like that. We'll get into that in just a moment when we start challenging ourselves. So the way I like to challenge myself, I like to move my bike further and further into the box because the closer that you get to this front line right here, the harder it's gonna be. So if I come all the way up here, I'm actually gonna have to let the bike pretty much lean over and then catch it with the clutch. We'll get there in a second. But for now, I'll show you what it looks like if you start a little bit forward. My tire is past this line now, so make sure you're in first gear. Cover that rear brake. Get your RPMs up. Find that friction zone, there it is. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm already past this cone, I'm gonna turn the handlebar just a little bit. This will make your turn a little bit tighter. There we go. Looking where I wanna go. No lean. And I was going slow enough, that was actually a full lock turn. So I'll turn my handlebars first, look in the direction I wanna go. Get them RPMs up, covering that rear brake still. Friction zone, start rolling forward. Look at my body position, stay in neutral. Another way you can challenge yourself, instead of starting directly in the middle of this entry lane, if you're gonna turn left, try to get over to the left as much as you can, because now you're gonna to have to make sure you go forward far enough, so that way your saddlebag doesn't hit. All right, you're gonna make sure first gear, cover that rear brake, throttles up, friction zone. Now notice I gotta come forward a little bit more, then start turning the handlebars. Voila, do it to the right as well. Notice I'm more on the right side of the lane. Now I have to come forward more, so that way I don't hit that cone. Lightly dragging that rear brake. Now once you get good at that and you really wanna challenge yourself, I come pretty much all the way up here. And in this instance, you're gonna have to start with the handlebars locked and you're gonna have to counterbalance. If you don't know what counterbalancing is, your body stays perpendicular with the bike and the bike leans underneath you. Now, in order to make this turn, I have to be counterbalancing pretty much right off the rip. Then I gotta make sure my throttle's up because this is very important because we're gonna let this bike actually start falling a little bit and then catch it with the clutch. And if you don't have enough throttle and you go to open up that clutch and your engine starts lugging, at that point you're gonna stall and most likely fall over. And since we're up this far, we don't have to worry about these tall cones anymore. We're far enough forward to where we can let the bike lean over. So let me go show you how that looks. First gear. I'm counterbalancing the bike to the left, covering that rear brake. Get the RPMs up, and now he's looking where you wanna go. Find that friction zone, smoothly enter into that friction zone. See, that was a little extreme. I let the bike fall a little too far, but I, I didn't put my feet down because I knew as soon as I opened that clutch, it was gonna stand back up. So let's try that again. Counterbalancing. There it is, baby. All right, now we'll do it to the right. Lock my handlebars, lose your balance. <laughs> it happens. Start leaning the bike, get your RPMs up. Make sure you find that friction zone. Let the bike start falling a little bit. Catch it with the clutch. Now that's definitely extreme. You don't have to get to that point. I just love to challenge myself to see how tight I can actually make the turn. And once you practice this, you'll find that you're not going out into the double yellow line anymore. I see this so many times, especially at you know group rides or something like that. It's just so dangerous. I mean, you never know when an oncoming car is coming. You think you can make it, but you end up going too wide. And this is a very important to practice so you don't do that. And remember, you have to control your speed while you're doing this. Lightly drag that rear brake because the faster you go, the wider your turn is gonna end up being. And the wider your turn, then you're gonna have to introduce more lean angle and if you're in a tight spot you might not have that option i'm excited to say i'm now offering private lessons so if you're interested make sure you go over to my website 
jogomotorcycleadventures.com, hit the private lessons tab and see what I have available. And I'll also be doing one free practice session a month while the riding season's still going. And I'm out here in Strongsville, Ohio. I'd love to train with you and hopefully I can catch some of you at my next practice session. To stay up to date when I'm gonna have the free practice session, make sure you join the Facebook group, Jogo Motorcycle Adventures. I'll also be posting the flyer on my channel under the community tab and on Instagram. If you want some more motorcycle tips and tricks, make sure to check out this playlist right here. As always, this is Jogo with Jogo Motorcycle Adventures and until next time, ride on.